habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo sapiens. After thousands and thousands of years of evolution, we have a new discovery. Home sapiens has always been around. Places where we live are key to humans. From caves to huts, and from houses to modern villas, our homes have been evolving with us. Is Home Sapiens fiction or reality? It is up to you to decide. Welcome to another episode of Season 2 of Home Sapiens podcast. Today we are visiting the largest country in Southeastern Europe, Romania. It is bordering the Black Sea and is a line between Bulgaria and Ukraine. The country joined the European Union in January 2007. An aging population, emigration of skilled labor, significant tax evasion, insufficient health care, and an aggressive loosening of the fiscal package compromise Romania's long-term growth and economic stability. And they are the top economic vulnerabilities. Habitat for Humanity Romania has been present in the country since 1996, a country in which estimated 5 million Romanians live in poverty, out of which 1.5 million are children. Urgent repairs are needed on over 20% of the country's housing stock, as they are in a very poor condition. In winter months, 12% of Romanians cannot keep their homes adequately warm. Let me introduce uh, Roberta Patrasco, National Director of Habitat for Humanity Romania. My name is Katerina Bizgacina, and I'm the Director of Communications for Europe, Middle East and Africa at Habitat for Humanity. And I'll be your host for this episode of Home Sapiens podcast. Habitat for Humanity Romania has recently launched a pilot project which aims to find the most cost-effective housing model. The design of these homes is based on a winning model out of 40 submitted proposals at the architectural competition Home for Humanity. This project was supported by the Hilti Foundation. Currently, there are six buildings already built. Roberto, welcome to our podcast and I am really happy to talk to you today. Happy to talk to you also, Katia. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Roberto. And uh, would you tell me a little bit more about the current state of the project and have all the buildings been completed and actually what you can tell us about this wonderful project? Yes, all the buildings have been completed. Uh, it is a pilot project for the moment. So we've built six homes, six uh, test units, as we've called them, being a pilot project. And there were basically two stages. It was one, the first stage in uh, July, August, when we actually did um, accelerated construction events with the help of volunteers. So during five days, we basically built roughly 70, 80% of those buildings. And then we have completed the buildings uh, by the end of September, by the end of last month, with the help of the construction team. So as we're speaking, the, the, the pilot project is uh, done, completed, and the homes are already built. Uh, could you please tell me a little bit more about the winning design? Did you use the winning design for the building? And uh, why exactly this particular model was picked from the competition? Yes, uh, as you mentioned, we organized the national uh, design uh, contest. We wanted to have many minds that think together for the cause of adequate shelter. And um, we looked at several factors. One was the budget, as, as you mentioned. We wanted a quality housing, but also to be low cost. And we had here a threshold uh, that was to be a maximum uh, 20,000 euros and 30,000 euros. The reason I'm mentioning two amounts is this: it is because we've actually built two different type of homes. One uh, smaller one which is like a studio and the bigger one which is like an apartment with uh, with two dormitories uh, so the first criteria was the budget then um, the second criteria we look uh, criterion we looked at the possibility to build the homes with the help of volunteers but in an accelerated manner in an accelerated fashion uh, that means that the, the the home can be built in a matter of five days most of the home can be built in five days so that was the second criterion and the third 
of course it had it had to be a good design good architectural quality good functionality even to look good i mean to be good housing and to be functional for the families that uh, that will inhabit those uh, homes so looking at these uh, three main uh, criteria which i must tell they are very complicated i mean not simple as they seem uh, to to build a beautiful house uh, that can be built in five days and uh, should be cheap as well it's a difficult task so looking at these three criteria uh, there was one winning design that had some some advantages over all the others well that's great i think it's it's really an impossible task you know all these three are uh, criteria that you mentioned And um, if we talk about the winning design uh, from your point of view, um, so what were the pros? I mean, what were the hitting points of the winning design and why did it win? Yeah, it had some it had some clear advantages. And I must say before revealing those uh, advantages, I must say that it's, it was kind of unanimity in the jury. And uh, we had uh, quite an experienced jury, like, one of the best architects in uh, in Romania, even the, the architect that represented Romania, the Venice Biennale of Architecture was present there. So it was quite a unanimity for the, the, the winning design. First, it was by far the lowest budget, even though I must say that from, as everyone knows, from last year when we had a design competition until now, all the prices went up. It, it doesn't have to do anything with the design, uh, the winning design itself, but all the prices went up, as we know, with the construction material crisis. So it had the the lowest uh, budget. Uh, That was uh, the first uh, advantage. Then it was uh, the simplicity itself. It was the simplest, uh, but at the same time, complex project. Because it's hard to to get to simplicity and functionality, actually. Um, And uh, this simplicity was that the winning design was a modular design so basically you can um, modify it as you as you would like you can have one module or two modules or three modules and uh, uh, enlarge or reduce the size of the home so that simplicity and modularity was also a big advantage the other one it was the fact that they in in a way um, they uh, respected the core house concept that means that you build something you build a structure, a home, but then the family itself can expand that structure. So it's a you also, you only build a, a core, but as the likelihood, um, uh, the economic uh, um, performance of the family increases over the time, and they they get better jobs, they 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 make more uh, uh, more money, and their economic situation improves, they can expand the home. So the design is uh, the the winning design is designed as such that it can be expanded afterwards by the family itself. And this is a vertical expansion. Actually, families can develop, uh, the home can be uh, developed in the attic as well. It's a habitable space. Um, And of course, it can be the the, the last uh, but not least um, advantage. Uh, It can be built fast with volunteers. Not all the projects that were submitted respected this uh, criterion, which is quintessential. Uh, but this one was um, straight on. I mean, it, it respected this uh, uh, this requirement very well. And we could actually test that last summer when we built uh, the homes with the help of uh, local volunteers. Well, that's great. So you not only developed the model, but you actually started testing it by developing the pilots that you built. And um, just going back uh, to something that you mentioned previously, so you said that uh, uh, the winning model uh, it has the core housing kind of a uh, core housing unit and then it can be expanded it can be um, you can put additions so maybe can you describe a little bit uh, the housing unit that you are uh, built uh, what does it include what is the standard core unit consist of and um, what can be uh, expanded what can be added and uh, you know our how many rooms does it have? What is the disposition of this housing unit? And where can it be expanded? Probably is the best way to start by mentioning that uh, there is a large, 
uh, unit and the small unit, and they are coupled. It's what we call a duplex. So they are two units coupled in the same building. So in the same building, you have two homes, two units. Uh, they have a common wall. We've done this. This is this was a requirement. So all all the designs that were submitted respected this requirement. It's something that we uh, we gathered in our more than twenty years of experience. Is more functional like that, more efficient in terms both of land because land is expensive and it's, it's, it's hard to get good land so by coupling the uh, the houses you get land efficiency but also you get cost efficiency because you have only one building one foundation you have some common walls a common roof and it, it gets more uh, efficient uh, regarding the cost with roughly 20 percent so all the design and the winning design is uh, they are coupled uh, they are in a duplex in a duplex as mentioned they it is a studio the small unit and the large unit now the small unit is uh 34, roughly 34 square meters, util space, habitable space. And the large unit is roughly 50 square meters. The surfaces aren't that big. We're talking about minimal housing here. Uh, you know, simple, decent, affordable. Um, and the size of the families is kind of a preset. I mean, in the studio that has a living room uh, coupled with the kitchen, so the kitchen and the living room are one one uh, room, and one bedroom. It's uh, it's for maximum uh, three members family. And is the the best way is to have a single parent family or um, some uh, some families coming from other uh, extremely vulnerable situations. So not numerous families for the small unit. For the larger unit, which is uh, fifty square meters, uh, this is a two bedroom. It's like an apartment. This is two bedroom. Basically, you have a living room which is like uh, eighteen square meters, coupled with the with the kitchen and the bathroom. And then on the left and on the right you have the two bedrooms each roughly 16 square meters the space is very um, well designed even though the total surface is not that big actually the the bedrooms are generous in size 16 square meters and uh, the large unit can host a family for maximum four to five members something like that so that will be in a nutshell i mean a you know a general description of the of the functional functionalities of the home I, I would love to see it. Uh, I would love to visit the site and see the homes that you built uh, like in real life. And I'm just wondering who are the lucky beneficiaries? I mean, who are the people, who are the families who moved into the homes that you completed so far? So basically, we have a whole process of uh, selecting uh, families from that community. We look at three main uh, criteria. Again, one is the urgent need for housing. So we assess various uh, vulnerabilities that that family is coping with, but it has to be urgent need for, for housing. Either that family lives in severe degradation of their current home either they uh, you know they're uh, they live in overcrowding or there is a risk or eviction or something like that so we have a whole uh, set of of uh, sub criteria that we use to assess the urgent need of decent housing that's the first criteria then the second of course is the it has to be low income we only serve families that earn maximum 60 percent of the national average this is the threshold of the relative poverty line so we are serving families that are really low income that cannot otherwise afford to uh, to have a mortgage or to go at the bank so it's kind of the vulnerable and very vulnerable families that don't have other options to have decent uh, decent conditions for for living and of course the third criterion the same as important as the other two is the willingness to volunteer we the families are volunteering according to the habitat model they have to volunteer the sweat equity and we use the sweat equity even even, even before they know that they will be selected. So uh, even during the selection process, we ask the families to perform a number of hours of volunteering uh, of volunteering in the community at different projects. So that, that's, a, that's a criterion itself. So based on that, we select uh, six families. 
which are uh, in real uh, need for uh, for housing. I must say it was from two communities, so not only from in one community. It's two four, four, four homes were uh, built in uh, one village, and the other two were built in uh, in other village. So um, six families in need, and we had a list of more than thirty applications. Okay, great. Maybe I just also want to explain uh, to our listeners what is sweat equity. So sweat equity, this is a term that Habitat for Humanity uses. We always ask uh, people who are building houses with us, who are partnering with us to put labor into uh, their new future homes. So sweat equity is this number of hours that they have to work at the construction site. And they can work either at the construction by doing some construction work at the site or sometimes when people for example are not skilled in the construction skills that they can also do something like cook meals for the volunteers or help them serve them drinks or uh, help them with something else around the construction site but they just have to really put labor um, in, into it because we believe that if you put effort into something, then you really treasure and value what you're getting. So you're not getting the houses for free. Um, you also put your labor and your efforts into your new homes. And um, just to follow up, maybe uh, you, you mentioned that you have constructed uh, six units. Uh, maybe can you mention where did you really build them, the locations where these houses were built and um, how many families have moved into the new homes? So two duplexes, that means four homes, were built in a small village in the northeast part of Romania, which is called uh, Poduri. This is a village of uh, roughly 1,500 uh, inhabitants. It's in the northeast part of Romania, in Moldova region, one of the poorest uh, regions in uh, actually not only in Romania, but in the whole of European Union. And uh, the other one, the other duplex uh, is in Kumpana village. Uh, this is a bigger village roughly 6,000 inhabitants and is the eastern part of uh, Romania close to the Black Sea. Uh, in Kumpana, this is kind of a continuation of a uh, longer term program so we started back uh, back in 2006 a program there and it's a perfect fit because we can continue the program in in Kumpana. so in total six families in these two villages great and uh, now tell me because at the beginning we were saying one of the requirements uh, for the construction and for the winning model was that it had to be built by volunteers and it should be built in a very short period of time so how many days did you did it take you to finish the housing units and did you really build them with the help of volunteers yes by all means i mean um, i would say 80% of the construction is done by volunteers and uh, during the 5 days it takes 5 days basically uh, starting from ground zero that means the foundation the concrete foundation is already done before that's one month before but starting from from the foundation up you 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 start with day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 and it's absolutely phenomenal to see what uh, 20 volunteers, 30 volunteers can achieve in, in five days. I mean, you wouldn't believe if someone comes in day one and they see just the open ground and just a concrete foundation and they then come back at uh, in, at day five and they see the whole home because on, on the exterior it's completely finished. It's 100% finished. It's only the, the interior that we still have to do the, some technical uh, stuff like the installations, which can, cannot be like electrical installations and thermal installations. Installations. This, this cannot be with, uh, done with volunteers. But other than that, it's kind of a, on the outside. You, it's 100% completed. So uh, it, it's kind of phenomenal uh, what, uh, what volunteers can achieve during five days. And uh, to add up a little to, uh, to this thing is that most of the volunteers actually don't have experience in construction. I, when I say most, I mean more than a half don't have, have never used a, you know, a, an electrical tool or something like that. Um, so it, it's incredible what can, can be achieved uh, by, by volunteers. And that is because mainly because they, they are there, they, they care what they do, about they do, and they are working more with the heart than with the, you know, with the hammer and the nail, I would say. 
Well, uh, thanks a lot, Roberta. And maybe just to close our conversation, I want, I want to ask you, we've heard a lot of this wonderful things about the project, about the pilot you, that you managed to build. Are you planning to continue with building houses based on this winning design? Or do you feel that it needs to be adjusted, you need to change something, or you would pick something different? So what are your future plans? So we're hoping to to build over 200 homes uh, like this one in the coming years. Uh, we have big plans uh, in the future. Now, regarding the winning design, uh, this was a pilot project. So as in any pilot, uh, the, pur- the purpose of the pilot if, if to see if it works or not first. And then if it works, if there are things to improve, what are the lessons learned after the pilot? So we, we've done this analysis. There are some things, I mean, the most parts are working. There are some things to improve that will make the design even better now that we've built six um, uh, homes and uh, we, we, we see how uh, it goes. So some of the things that we are now actually in the process of improving is um, to simplify a little the structure. Uh, the structure can be simplified. That means some even more cost efficiencies uh, to be a little cheaper, but also it can the, it, this simplification can make the processes faster. That means during five days, we can achieve even more with this simplification. We already have the solutions. We, we talked with the specialists and uh, um, we, can, we can improve this in the, in the winning design. Also, another thing that we noticed um, and also um, it's one thing when you see on the you know, on the paper, on the plans, the design, it's other thing when you actually build it and uh, and you, you, you see the real size uh, in, in reality is increase a little the surface. Not that much, but there is a need, especially at the small unit, uh, there is a need to increase the surface to get more habitable space. Of course, we had the, the budget limitation, but with the simplification of the structure that we are making, uh, they were balanced itself so even though we simplify the structure we increase a little the surface and the result will be that the cost remains the same basically the same so uh, that will be uh, that will be the way forward regarding the design itself so there will be some uh, some tweaks uh, here to improve the the pilot but overall we want to we want to build over 200 homes in the next year uh, based on uh, on this new project which will make eventually because this is the most important things will make uh, 200 more families uh, Happier. Well, good luck, and I really look forward to this two two hundred new houses that you are planning to build. I think it's a really great initiative, and I'm really happy that this is possible and that you are building houses for the vulnerable families, not just to build something, but you're really putting your heart into it, and you are developing. Are some really modern, some really nice houses that you know everyone would love to have. So yeah, maybe just one additional question, Roberta. We always ask guests uh, to this podcast uh, to have a personal question, and the personal question is, what does home mean to you personally? Home for me means happiness, peace of mind, and family. That's really great. So thank you very much, Roberto, for this wonderful conversation. Uh, And uh, dear listeners, before the end, I would like to invite you to the Europe Housing Forum that will be organized by Habitat for Humanity. It takes place from November 16th until November 19th. And we are going to be discussing exactly these questions, how to build innovative, affordable housing for the region. The Europe Housing Forum aims to bring together housing sector players to learn, collaborate and position housing as a key driver of sustainable cities and economic growth. You can find out more about the Europe Housing Forum by visiting the website www.europehousingforum.eu. And thank you for listening to another episode of our Home Sapiens podcast. Home matters to humans. You've listened to the Home Sapiens podcast, produced by Habitat for Humanity.